we have in the house. Christ is risen. Christ is risen. Christ is risen. Death could not hold him. Christ is risen. What a blessed privilege it is to be able to come to the house of the Lord on Resurrection Sunday. Now I'm going to give you the proper response because I love the applause that we gave our Christ. Back in the day when the Christians were known as people of the way. And whenever they would come across each other and particularly on what we call Resurrection Sunday, they would say Christ is risen and the response would be he is risen indeed. And so I want you all to give me that response. Christ is risen. Let's give pride praise as we prepare for the ordinance of baptism. Be seated in the presence of the Lord. We have two, have two young men that we're going to be baptizing this morning. Two young men, two brothers that we're going to be baptizing this morning. Uh, and God is to be praised. Before we do that, though, I just want to stress, if there are any children, we have our youth and children's church that is open. And you can, if you want your child to go to youth and children's church, they can go out and go to my right, your left. And there's a check-in station. I believe that also our ushers and medical team and others may be also directing them to that. All right. Let's carry out the ordinance of baptism. Let's give God praise for Brother Erwin Anthony. <laughs> Brother Anthony, have you accepted Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior? Yes. And do you still want to be baptized and become a part of the St. Paul Church? Yes. Amen. I'm going to ask the family of Brother Anthony, if, you all, if you're here, would you please stand? Any relatives or friends of Brother Anthony? Brother Erwin Anthony, based upon your confession of faith in Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior and your willingness to be baptized on this resurrection day, we baptize you in the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. We have before us Master Elijah. Elijah, have you accepted Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior? Yes. Amen. And are you still willing to be baptized and become a part of the St. Paul Church? Yes. All right, amen. Brother Elijah, based upon your confession of faith in Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior this morning, we baptize you in the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. praise as we prepare for our call to work. Come on, you can all do better than that. Come on, let's give God some praise as we stand all over the building. This is the day that the Lord has made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. Now listen, I don't know what you've come to do, but I've come to bless his name. Does anybody come in here to bless his name today? Come on, did anybody come in here to bless the name of our Lord? Have you come in here for no other purpose you didn't come to look at anybody you didn't come to see what they got on that new easter do but you come to give god some praise i want you to give him some praise right now come on give god some praise if he's done anything for you give him praise because if it had not been for the lord on our side we don't know where we would be hallelujah 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 our choir is gonna
lives, we can face tomorrow. Our scripture this morning is found in 1 Corinthians, 15th chapter. I want to begin reading there at the 19th verse. 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse number 19. If this life only, we have hope in Christ. We are of all men the most pitiable. But now Christ is risen from the dead and has become the first fruits of those who have fallen asleep. For since by man came death, by man also came the resurrection of the dead. For as in Adam all die, even so in Christ all shall be made alive. But each one in his own order, Christ the first fruits, afterward those who are Christ at his coming. Then comes the end, when he delivers the kingdom to God the Father, when he puts an end to all rule and all authority and power. For he must reign till he has put all enemies under his feet. The last enemy that will be destroyed is death. Is that what your Bible say? Come on, is that what your Bible say this morning? Come on here, the last enemy that will be destroyed is death. Would you go to God with me in prayer? Our Father and our God, Lord, we come before you this morning. God, we come because we're excited about today. Father, this is the day that you have made and we have decided to be glad. And Father, we are filling this church and we are going to rejoice and be glad in the fact, oh God, that you brought us here one more Sunday morning. God, we are glad to be in your worship. And God, because we are here, we know that you're already here. And so God, we just say thank you. Thank you, Father, for setting the atmosphere for praise and for worship. Father, we didn't get dressed up just to come to church to look at one another. Oh, Father, we came today because our hearts are leaping with joy. We are leaping with joy in our hearts today because if it had not been for you, God, we know that none of us would be here today. So, God, we are rejoicing today. We are rejoicing because this today is Resurrection Sunday. Today is the day. Jesus Christ went to the cross and he died on that cruel cross for our sins and for that God we are grateful and God we pray that because we are here because we're not here to look at each other we're glad oh God that you're moving up and down every aisle oh God we're glad that you're in the balcony God we're glad that you're in the choir and God you're here in this pulpit oh God we want because of today because today is your day. God, you have your way. Have your way in this worship today. Have your worship, oh God, as we sing your songs, as we, as we read your scriptures, as we pray your prayers. Oh God, be with the choir, be with our pastor, be with us all. Because we are here for no other purpose than to worship and praise your name. Oh God, do something magnificent in this atmosphere today save somebody oh god save somebody today somebody that got up this morning that came to church for no other reason than to meet you right here oh god meet them right where they are god move in their aisle move on their seat oh god touch them right now in the name of jesus from the crown of their head to the sole of their feet god you be glorified be glorified in everything that is said and done today. In the name of Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. Amen. Come on, before you have your seats, why don't you give God some praise? Aren't you glad that he's in the building? Aren't you glad that he stopped by here today? And he stopped by here for no other purpose than to help us do what we have been called to do. You may have your seats in his presence. The choir you may sing.
he is risen let me try that one more time we did this prior to baptism Christ is risen indeed amen 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 I need to try that one more time because I don't think we got it I need to see how many Christians I have in the house Christ is risen indeed hallelujah 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 good morning good morning good morning what a blessed joy it is to be in the house of the Lord on what we call resurrection Sunday we don't take this uh, opportunity for granted to worship our God before we have uh, announcements and observations uh, I believe that um, Brother Mitchell is here. Uh, do I say yes? Would you come um, and you can bring brief greetings on behalf of your uh, candidacy um, at this particular time? Good morning, St. Paul Baptist Church. Thank you so much, uh, and, and, and I just have a few, just a few comments, Pastor, because I don't want y'all to go out here and say that every time a politician comes to speak for us, they take five minutes. So hold me to two minutes. All right, church? All right. First of all, thank you for the warmth. Every time I come to worship at St. Paul, I see so many friends and so many faces, so I got to give a shout out to those who either you changed my diaper like Miss Jackie Weldon, to Miss NCCU, Miss Vaughn Pettis, to Brother Gary Davis, to Brother Al Austin, who helped me start my way. And if you need your car service, go see Brother Eric Evans. And if you need a nice haircut, go see Brother Woody Daniels. And if you need to know about leadership, go see Ch Commissioner Chairman Brother George Dunlap. And last but not least, to my fraternity brother, your spiritual leader, my good friend, Pastor Robert Scott. So St. Paul, in my last 30 seconds, I am James Smudge Mitchell, running for Charlotte City Council at Large. There are four opportunities, and I just ask that you will pray and vote that I be one of your four choices. On the back out there, I have a nice brochure, so I'm not going to indict you with all my accomplishments and how we work together, but I want to leave you with this. Make sure you put those who will represent you, who will work for you. I'm proud to stand before you. I voted for your new development, and look what St. Paul has done to make Charlotte a better community. Vote James Smudgy Mitchell. Thank you. Amen. Thank you, Brother James. And um, of course, we are in that moment of um, social life whereby uh, people are running for various offices and we want you to utilize your um, your voting discretion as far as that's concerned. Do we have the video ready? All right, let's roll with the video real quick. Hello, St. Paul. I bring you greetings from the Academic Resource Ministry with exciting news for the graduating class of 2022. It's scholarship time. Scholarship applications are now available for graduating high school disciples. Class of 2022, you have opportunities to receive funds for your future endeavors from the Academic Resource Ministry, Men of Valor, and Deacon Family Ministry. Application packets are available on the St. Paul Baptist Church website. Requirements vary, so please read each packet closely. The deadline for all three scholarship opportunities is Sunday, May 29th. For questions, contact the ministry lead on the application. Thank you, St. Paul, and be blessed. God of lessness, he, he is the God of history. He is the God who was, who stepped into nothing and nothing made everything who flung the stars against the darkness of the night and scooped out the mountain, scooped out the valleys and pushed up the mountains, who put the blush in the rose and the purity in the lily. Uh, he's that God who caused the moon, the silver queen of the night, to dance across the darkness of the severe sin. He's that God who summons the sun out of its oriental chamber and sent it across its iridescent rays, galloping across its iridescent rays. He's that God, the God of history. 
cosmic shepherd. Now it's our turn to sing these. The song is unfinished. It is our turn to sing a song of hope. A better world is possible. It is our turn to sing a song of assessment that the world that we are in is untenable. It is our turn to sing the song of faith that says the God who sees and the God who hears is also the God who saves. It's our turn. It's not a solo. And what you just saw are two of our speakers for next week. Uh, Dr. W. Franklin Richardson will be here for our church's 122nd anniversary. And I believe God deserves the praise on that. Next Sunday, we'll be celebrating 122 years of being in existence. And we're asking for all of our adult disciples uh, to please give above your tithes and offerings $122, $1 for each year that the Lord has allowed for St. Paul to continue to have work and make impact upon the Charlotte Mecklenburg community. And my good friend and classmate, the Reverend Dr. W. Franklin Richardson, the pastor of the Grace Baptist Church in Mount Vernon, as well as the chair of the Congress of National Black Churches will be our guest preacher. Guest preacher for Women's Day is gonna be my sister, the Reverend Dr. Leslie Callahan, the pastor of St. Paul's Baptist Church in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. And so we want to make you mindful of that. The office is going to be closed on tomorrow for Easter Monday, and we'll be back open on Tuesday. Just also want to mention that um, uh, on Wednesday, April the 27th, at 7 o'clock, we will be having Kaya on that Wednesday, and we're going to be dealing with the discussion topic, spiritual but not religious. Do we really need organized religion? Uh, and this should be a very rich conversation so make sure you join us live at seven o'clock uh, on our various platforms facebook youtube vimeo or our church website or listen to the um conversation uh live stream also during that time umba will be having this congress and uh our own uh reverend brenda richardson serves as the dean for our congress and they will be having classes during that week as well as sessions uh, worship services here at the church during that week. You could go to our website or go to UMBA website to sign up for classes if you would like to participate as far as that is concerned. Uh, just also want to mention, of course, you heard me talk about Women's Day. And um, I'm going to ask, where's the chair? Kelly, stand up. Kelly is our new Women's Day chair. Let's give God praise for her. And our sisters have a lot of things planned for Women's Weekend, May the 14th and the 15th. Uh, their theme is, I Know Who I Am, on Saturday, May the 14th. They're going to have their version, their own version of Diner in Blanc. Um, each woman can bring, can choose the color that best represents who you are and bring a blanket, chairs, decoration, and lunch. They're going to have a picnic. And in order to respect COVID, needs but still have fun as community they're going to eat outside and be able to practice as much social distance as possible uh, that is going to take place from 11 30 a.m to 3 30 p.m at the lata nature preserve 621 sample road huntersville north carolina shelter number three they'll be in a covered area uh, so bring your lunch friends and family and come out for the fellowship and then we're going to celebrate through service and uh, be accepting donations in partnership with a giving heart for I Feel Pretty Kits, where you can donate feminine hygiene products, underwear, makeup, shampoo, body lotion, lipstick, perfume, soap. Should I say that? Tampons, pads, toothpaste, dental floss, <laughs> washcloths, facial cleanser, sock, etc. Amen. 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 So we can provide essentials for women who had to flee their homes due to violence. And then on Sunday, May the 15th, it's Women's Day. And again, my sister is going to be preaching. So get excited, sisters. Bring a friend. Celebrate all week long. Uh, it doesn't matter whether you're married or single, young, medium, or old. 
uh, it's our time, so come out and uh, let's have some fun. So I wanted to mention that as well. It is so good to see so many of you all out here for Resurrection Sunday, and I know that for some, this is the first time you've been in church uh, in a long time. I want to, first of all, just personally thank you for your support, how you have been engaging us and been with us virtually, as well as in place, I mean, as well as physically when we were able to open up. So for those that are watching us online, we appreciate you. For those that are able to come to the house, we thank God for you. Before I move the prayer, we have two young brothers that were baptized, and I'm going to ask that Erwin and Elijah will come forward so I can present to them their baptismal certificates and Bible. Let's give God praise for these striking young men. Erwill, I'm giving you um, your uh, baptismal certificate and a Bible. And this Bible is your Bible. This certificate is you celebrating your second birthday uh, that you've been baptized as far as the family of God is concerned. And so I want to present this to you. And to Elijah King, I want to present to you your baptismal certificate and your Bible. I want to encourage you to do a couple of things. Number one, read the Bible. Put this certificate in a place of prominence. Frame it. Get it framed. It's, it's, it's something that's very important. You don't ever have to get baptized again. We're going to teach you what it means to be a follower of Jesus Christ here at St. Paul Church, through our youth and children's church, as well as through other things that you can engage in. But we are excited and we want to welcome you to the family of God. So St. Paul, can you help me to celebrate two of our newer disciples? Let's give God praise for them. Amen. 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 You may return to your seat. We thank God for you. Hallelujah. It's prayer time. It's prayer time. It is prayer time. It is prayer time. And um, let me just share. Do we have arrangements for Brother Steele? Um, brother, uh, we want to lift up the family of disciple Reginald Steele. Um, his services are going to be this Friday here at the church. The quiet hour is going to be at 11 o'clock and the services will be at noon. He is the father of disciple Brother Sean Steele and of course the brother of disciple Lafayette Steele. We want to keep that family lifted up in prayer. Uh, we also want to lift up the family of Sister Sarah Davis, sister-in-law of disciple Brother Gary Davis and Brother Charles Davis. Uh, her services are pending. Um, we also want to lift up the family of Sister Connie Oliver, the mother of disciple Felicia Oliver, and her services are pending as well. We want to continue to lift up the family of Sister Alberta Henderson, the aunt of uh, Disciple Deborah Dalton, and the family of Brother Bryce McCain, the husband of Disciple Sister Gwendolyn McCain. His services were held here at the church uh, this past Monday. And we also want to lift up uh, the family of Sister uh, Disciple Felicia Rhodes, who lost her mother. And we want to continue to flank her in our prayers. As far as sick and shut-in are concerned, we want to lift up Deacon Odd. Uh, Deacon Sylvia Audrey, uh, Brenda Irwin, Deacon Angela McDonald, Willie Perry off the Rucks, Thomas Smith, and of course our Pastor Emeritus, uh, Reverend Dr. Paul Drummond and his wife, uh, Sister Lady Thomasina. I'm going to ask that uh, Dr. Redmond will come and take us to the throne of grace as far as prayer time is concerned. And if you have any prayer concerns, you can of course offer them up to God at this time. Would you bow your heads for just a few moments and go to God with, with me in prayer. Our Father and our God, Father, before we ask you for a thing, we first want to say thank you. Thank you, Father, for being the kind God that you are. Thank you for being Father, the one that we can run to, the one that we can go to 
when we are experiencing difficulties. God, we say thank you. Thank you, Father, that we have an advocate with you. We thank you for your son, Jesus, who went to the cross on our behalf and rose again on the third day morning. Thank you for Jesus. Thank you, Father, because we know that if it had not been for him going to the cross, then we would die in our sins. But God, thank you for his resurrection. Thank you, Father, that he got up. And Father, because he got up, we find out that we can also get up. Oh God, we are experiencing many difficulties. Father, you heard our prayer report. You heard, oh God, of our disciples who are experiencing grief this week. God, we lift them up to you in the name of Jesus. God, we lift up those who are in hospitals right now and those who have experienced surgeries. And God, we know that you are a healer. And so God, right now in the name of Jesus, we wanna say thank you. Thank you for our healing. Thank you, oh God, because we know if it had not been for you, we don't know where we would be. So God, we say thank you today. Thank you for our brothers and our sisters whose names that we have read today. God, we pray in the name of Jesus that you will comfort those who are grieving. Oh God, gr comfort the family of Brother Reginald Steele. Oh God, comfort them in the name of Jesus. Let them know that you have them wrapped in your loving arms. Oh God, let them know that they have brothers and sisters who are here and we are here to lift them up. Oh God, when they are going down, we pray in the name of Jesus that you will lift them right back up. God, we love you. God, we thank you. We thank you, oh God, that we don't have to send you to the hospitals. Oh God, we can just pray right where we are. We can stand right where we are because God, we know that you're already at the hospitals. God, we know that you're already causing healing to, to be in the bodies of those who are there. God, raise them up anew. Oh God, raise them up in such a way that it won't even look like what they've been through. God, we say thank you. Thank you, oh God, for who you are. Thank you, oh God, for every person under the sound of my voice that's experiencing loss right now. Oh God, comfort them in the name of Jesus. Oh God, comfort us all. And God, when we leave here today, all of us are going to leave here leaping and jumping knowing that we have been in your presence. God, thank you. Thank you for your comfort. Thank you for your power. Thank you for your energy. Thank you for your lifting. God, thank you. Oh God, when we leave here, we are going to know that we have been in your presence. And we thank you right now. In the name of Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. Amen. If you believe the prayer, give God some praise today. Come on, let's give God the praise he so richly and rightfully deserved. Sisters and brothers, it's offering time. It's offering time. Before I get started, what usher is in charge today? Who's in charge today? Who's in charge? Who's in charge? Who's in charge? All right, come see me right after I do this prayer, okay? Come see me. Um, it is offering time, and as we prepare to receive the Lord's offering, there are three ways that you can uh, give this morning. Uh, the first way you can give is by, of course, um, putting, sending your check here to the church. You can mail your check to 1401 Allen Street, Charlotte, North Carolina, or drop off your check, cash, or money order here at the church. But call the church office first at 704-334-5309 to make sure someone is here to receive it. Second way you can give us through ACS or our church website, Church Life. And then the third way you can give us through the app called Givelify. And if you have that app on your smart device, you can give as far as that's concerned. If you have a physical offering in the church, there's a basket on the road that is in front of you. And that basket in the road that is in front of you, you can give, uh, drop your offering off right after we have our prayer. So if you wouldn't mind, uh, however you're giving, whether it's electronic or you have a physical offering, would you raise your offering 
to the heavens, place it in your right hand, raise to the heavens. We want to give God what's right, not what's left. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. God, we come and we thank you for the wonderful opportunity to partner with you in giving. And as we give, oh God, not grudgingly nor out of necessity, but cheerfully because you love the cheerful giver. Take these gifts of ours, multiply them in a Godful way so that your word, your witness, and your work will go forth through the tribe known as St. Paul. It's in the name of your son, Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. For those that have fiscal offering, if you would drop your offering in that basket in front of you. Uh, for those that have electronic, we appreciate how you're going to give. Before we have our sermonic selection, is Sister Lisa Murray here? Is Lisa, stand up. I got two announcements I want to share with you all today that's concerning our state convention. First of all, uh, I want you to pray for and give whatever support we can to Sister Lisa Murray. She is running for the first vice president of the Women, Home, and Foreign Mission Auxiliary of our state convention. Amen. We could do a whole lot better than that. We could do a whole lot better than that. So she's going to be running for president, I mean, vice, uh, first vice president, and she has an opponent. So we got to make sure we can do whatever we can to give her support. So uh, that is a formal announcement from uh, me as her pastor and as her supporter. That election will be taking place in, near the end of July. Then also, I want to let you all know that I'm throwing my hat in the ring for president of the General Baptist State Convention of North Carolina. I feel that at this time coming out of this pandemic that um, there's a certain set of skills that may be needed to help give the convention lift and I want to offer my services if they will have it. So I solicit your prayers uh, as we begin our campaign uh, for that particular office as far as the General Baptist State Convention of North Carolina. I'm kind of doing like my predecessor. Uh, running from the floor uh, and hopefully I can do what he did as well because he provided sterling leadership uh, when he was in charge and that's Dr. Greg Moss. So we solicit your prayers for our endeavors and uh, whatever support you can give it would be greatly appreciated. Thank you so much. You've done such a marvelous thing. For someone so wretched, yet my soul you have redeemed.
2,000 years ago when he raised Jesus Christ from the dead and in all of time there has been only one resurrection and that is the resurrection of Jesus Christ I know many of you are saying but wait a minute I read about Lazarus coming back from the dead and Elijah came back from raised somebody from the dead that is true but they had to die again that went over somebody's head but Jesus Christ when he was resurrected is alive forevermore one day we gonna learn how to shout on good doctrine everything else was a restoration back to this life but when Jesus Christ was raised from the dead, he was raised with a glorified body, never ever having to die again. So there's only been one resurrection, and that is Jesus Christ. Let's give God praise for our music ministry. Thank you for reminding us of the marvelous thing that God has done. I want to call your attention to the gospel narrative of Luke chapter 24. I want to read verses 1 through 12 for your hearing, uh, for the time that is mine. And um, let's sense and seek what the Lord will do as far as this moment is concerned. Luke chapter 24, starting at verse 1, these words are printed. Now on the first day of the week, very early in the morning, they and certain other women with them came to the tomb bringing the spices which they had prepared. But they found that the stone rolled away from the tomb. Then they went in and did not find the body of the Lord Jesus. And it happened as they were greatly perplexed about this that behold, two men stood by them in shining garments. Then as they were afraid and bowed their face to the earth, they said to them, why do you seek the living among the dead? He is not here, but is risen. Remember how he spoke to you when he was still in Galilee saying, the son of man must be delivered into the hand of sinful men and be crucified and the third day rise again and they remembered his words then they returned from the tomb and told all these things to the eleven and to all the rest it was mary magdalene joanna mary the mother of james and the other women with them who told these things to the apostle and their words seemed to them like idle tales and they did not believe them but Peter arose and ran to the tomb, and stooping down, he saw the linen cloths lying by themselves. And he departed, marveling to himself what had happened. I want to preach for the time that is mine on this Resurrection Sunday. Good news from a bad spot. Good news from a bad spot. We solicit uh, your prayers. <clears throat> the late Charles Colson, one of the key figures of the Watergate scandal, and eventually the founder of the Prison Fellowship International, made a very provocative statement about the reality of the resurrection of Jesus Christ. 
in an article that was published in the Washington Post back in September of 1983. He said, and I quote, the lesson of Watergate is that a lie cannot live for long. Here we were, the 10 most powerful men in the United States with all that power, and we could not keep a lie together for two weeks. Take it from one who was involved in conspiracy, who saw the frailty of man firsthand, there is no way the 11 apostles who were with Jesus at the time of the resurrection could have ever gone around 40 years preaching Jesus' resurrection unless it was true. They, the apostles, would have sold out each other just to save their own skins. This profound statement from a man who went from being a criminal to becoming a Christian really shed light into the truthfulness about the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead. As Charles Colson pondered the truth and the reality of the resurrection of Jesus Christ, he deals with it from the perspective of the apostles' willingness to die to keep the story going. For Colson, it must be true because if it were a lie, it would not have survived nearly 2,000 years of skepticism and scrutiny. I will admit that there are various theories to debunk the resurrection of Jesus Christ, and every time a theory comes up, it falls short. Those theories range from disciples stealing the body of Jesus. How could they steal his body if it was being guarded by Roman soldiers? To the belief that Jesus did not really die, but he really did die because he was pierced in the side, and from the side came blood and water. As a matter of fact, he was so dead that the Roman soldiers did not even break his leg to speed up his death. The disciples could not have stolen the body because they were hiding from the Roman officials and the Jewish religious leaders because they thought they were going to suffer the same fate as Jesus. Jesus really did die. He didn't swoon. He didn't sleep. He didn't go into a coma. He really did die, and the soldiers preserved his leg. However, it took more than Jesus dying on a cross to set into motion this community that we call the church. It took more than Jesus dying on the cross to really save us from our sins. Jesus had to be raised from the dead. And it is the resurrection of Jesus Christ that serves as the foundation of the gospel we preach, teach, and live. As a matter of fact, you can't really be a Christian unless you believe that Jesus is alive and is coming back one day. The Polish writer Zeslaw Milos, who won the Nobel, Peace Prize, Nobel Prize for Literature back in 1980, said in so many words, and I quote, if Karl Marx had argued that religion is the opium of the people, then today's opium of the people is the belief that we are responsible to no one and will never be held to account for what we did. Believing that there is no God is just one aspect of human yearning to do what we like, to be whom we choose, and be subject to nobody. End of quote. The resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead empowers us to believe and know that there is a God somewhere. The resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead reminds us that there is someone higher, better, and more grand than we can ever imagine. The resurrection attests to the reality of God, our creator, and one day we're going to have to see God for ourselves. Since the gospel is good news, God knows we need good news in times like this. As we survey our city, our country, and this world, we are inundated with a lot of chaos and confusion, trouble and tension, stress and strain 
depression and despondency which continues to wreak havoc upon us as individuals and upon our community as a whole. Violence continues to escalate. The war between Ukraine and Russia has us on the edge of a third world war. Inflation is at its highest in 40 years. Unfortunately, black lives still do not matter when it comes to some police officers. COVID and its variants continue to take lives as people still will not get vaccinated. Families are still falling apart. Children are still being neglected. Female spouses are still the most victims of spousal abuse. Politics in America and around the globe are more divisive than ever. Climate change has put our planet in the intensive care unit when it comes to our existence. The wealth gap between the have and the have nots has increased exponentially. We have become a nation of unloving strangers who only care about ourselves to the detriment of the community. Every time I watch the news, every time I look at my social media feed, there is an overabundance of bad news. There is a major saturation of crazy situations, and God knows our morals are going to hell in a handbasket. I don't know about anybody else, but I'm here to attest to the fact that our world, our country, and a whole lot of us find ourselves in a bad spot. War in Ukraine, bad spot. Economic decline, bad spot. Homicide in our communities, bad spot. Inflation on the rise, bad spot. Police brutality, bad spot. White supremacy, bad spot. Racial violence, bad spot. Racism, bad spot. Sexism, bad spot. Classism, bad spot. Under education of our children, bad spot. Homelessness, bad spot. Depression, bad spot. Mental illness, bad spot. Sickness, bad spot. Loneliness, bad spot. And dealing with death, bad spot. And yet, despite all the bad spots we have, I got good news. And that good news is connected intricately and intimately to the resurrection of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. The good news is he is not dead. He is risen as he said he would, and he is alive forevermore. I want to impress upon you that if you don't get anything else, the resurrection of Jesus ought to change how you go about your life. Because he lives, songwriter said, I can face tomorrow. Interestingly, in the text that I've shared with you this morning, the women thought he was still dead. They show up at the tomb on the first day of the week. They found themselves in a bad spot. Jesus had died on that Friday. Now, if I could, uh, before I delve deeper into the text, let me do an aside because there are those who want to dispute how Jesus wasn't dead for three days. But yes, he was. According to Jewish timing and reckoning of time, a day included any part of a day. So it was not necessarily a full 24 hours of every day that Jesus was, die was dead, but he died on Friday. That's one day. He stayed in the grave all day Saturday. That's two days. And he got up on Sunday morning, that's three days. Uh, he didn't have to be in the grave for 72 hours in order for it to be fulfilled. He died on a Friday, stayed in the tomb on a Saturday, and early Sunday morning, God got him up with all power in his hand. The scriptures have been fulfilled. So I don't get into a debate with some of these folks trying to measure out how long Jesus was in the grave. He died. But hallelujah, God got him up. And when those sisters showed up at the tomb at daybreak, they saw that Jesus had already risen. They could not find his body. They saw angels standing there in robes that were gleaming like lightning. They were afraid and they bowed, not in reverence or worship, 
but to shade their eyes from the brightness of the angelic clothing. The angels asked the sisters a profound question. Why are you seeking the living among the dead? He is not here, for he has risen as he has said. It is interesting, and I would dare say that even in today's culture, we're still trying to find the living among the dead. The angels reminded the women how Jesus had told them this was going to happen. The sisters run to the 11 remaining disciples to share the good news with them, and they were rebuffed. Felt like their words were nonsense. The, the apostles did not believe them, but Peter went to the tomb to see for himself and was blown away by what he saw. I want to wrestle just for a few brief moments about what is the good news for us today about the resurrection of Jesus Christ as we find ourselves in a bad spot. Can I wrestle just for a few moments? I promise I'm going to get you all out in good time. First of all, Jesus' resurrection reframes the negative flack that our sisters often get. Y'all don't even know when to shout. Let me say it again. The resurrection of Jesus Christ reframes the negativity that our sisters get and it shifts the narrative and puts our sisters in a much better light. This is seen in verses 1 through 4 as the resurrection vindicates womanhood. Now, let's be real because unfortunately in biblical times and even in times today, our sisters are often portrayed in a negative light and in the cultures and in the scriptures because there are some folks who don't know how to properly interpret scripture who say that if it wasn't for woman or for Eve, we wouldn't be in the mess that we're in. But I'm here to let you know you don't know how to read the Bible because when I read my Bible, it wasn't when Eve ate of the fruit, it was when Adam ate of the fruit that the eyes of them were open. But because patriarchism and male chauvinism is so entrenched in our culture, our women catch a lot of negativity because there are people who don't think our women have anything to offer. But I'm here to let you know that when I look at the Bible and I see how women often get the short end of the stick, Jesus' resurrection reframes the idea that our women don't have anything to offer. Let me just say that I, I, it pains my heart to see our sisters get the short end of the stick, especially black women. My God, I think the only way that Katanja became Supreme Court Justice was because she had to have a faith in the resurrected Christ. Now, I'm getting ready to mess up some of y'all male chauvinists in the house because the resurrection, when properly read, interpreted, and applied, casts a more positive light for the women. Because if the gospel is good news, uh-oh, the first announcement from the human perspective about good news did not come from the brothers. It came from the sisters. It was the women that showed up to anoint Jesus' dead body out of devotion because they knew Joseph had not done it because the Sabbath was coming. It was the women's devotion to the Lord Jesus that is an indication of their discipleship in following him. Yes, Jesus had some female disciples following him. And contrary to misguided belief, Jesus had some sisters that supported him and his ministry with passion and power and purpose and their money and it is this passion that is demonstrated by them showing up early on the first day when the brothers were scared to come out don't look at me like that brothers don't look, don't look at me like that you gotta blame Peter and the other ten for this one the, the, those sisters had to be devoted those sisters had to love Jesus to be brave enough to get up early in the morning, show up at a tomb, trying to figure out how they were going to move the stone. You know, they had to be black. They, they had to be sisters of color. Because only sisters of color would show up trying to figure out how to roll away a stone. And if they had to, they would have tried to move it themselves. 
Because when Jesus' ride and die boys did not show up, the sisters were there. I don't know about anybody else, but I'm glad to give God praise because had it not been for the women, we wouldn't know about the resurrection. <laughs> eh, y'all better stop dogging women out. Y'all, 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 y'all better stop. Y'all better stop dogging women out. And women, y'all need to stop dogging each other out. I'm glad that Jesus, when he rose from the grave, that the first people that were able to attest to the fact were the women. So it refrains the negativity that we often bring when it comes to our sisters. Think about it. Think about it. Just think about it. That, that when it comes to Jesus, a male ain't have nothing to do with him. You miss your shout cue. Boy, one day we're going to learn how to shout on doctrine. Because Jesus was born of a virgin. The Holy Spirit engaged in what I call supernatural in vitro fertilization and planted a divine seed in the womb of Mary, Joseph ain't had nothing to do with Jesus. So a man ain't had nothing to do with him coming into the world, and a man ain't had nothing to do with him being risen from the grave. It's always been the women. I don't know about anybody else, but I want to thank God for Mary Magdalene. I want to thank God for his black mama, Mary. I want to thank God for Mary, the mother of James and Joseph. I want to thank God for Salome. I want to thank God for Joanna. I want to thank God for the other women, because had they not shown up, we wouldn't know that he was alive. So the resurrection reframes the negativity that we often place upon our sisters, but it does something else. The resurrection reverses the impact of death. Okay, all right. It, 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 it reverses the impact of death. That's, that's in verses five and six. Because when they show up to put spices on his body, the angels had already taken care of moving the stone, and the angels present the women with this question. Why are you seeking the living among the dead. He is not here, but is risen. Remember how he spoke to you when he was still in Galilee, saying, the Son of Man must be delivered into the hand of sinful men, be crucified, and on the third day, rise again. As I said before, there's only been one resurrection, and that's Jesus Christ. Anyone else who died, and were raised from the dead were restored back to this life which meant that they had to die again which meant that they did not experience resurrection but restoration and there's a difference between being restored and being resurrected see when you are restored you are you are giving back your old body but when you're resurrected you're given a glorified body and, and so Jesus was resurrected and he was given a glorified body that was able to transcend material things here on earth. I'm preaching better than y'all saying amen. When Jesus was raised from the dead, he would never deal with death again. And that's because Jesus took the sting out of death and he robbed the grave of the victory and he now walks around with a glorified body that's different than the body that went into the tomb. Let me just say every time we have a funeral, every time we bury a loved one, every time we have a casket down here in front of the church, it reminds us of our finitude of being creatures of time. Death is something that all of us will face sooner or later. Death wreaks havoc upon our lives when it takes someone we love dearly. However, Jesus says, I am the resurrection and the life. He that believeth in me, though he were dead, yet shall he live again. Instead of death having the last word, 
when you and I have a relationship with God through Jesus Christ, death is not the end. But death is merely a transition from life temporal to life eternal. That when a Christian dies, they don't really die, they go to sleep until they wait for the blast of the resurrection trumpet. And the dead in Christ shall rise. And everybody else who believes in him shall be caught up and we shall bask in the glory of God. The reason that you and I can give God praise is because Jesus Christ is alive and we don't have to be afraid of death any longer. Let me go ahead and wrap this thing up. Because the resurrection of Jesus also reminds us that Jesus will keep his word. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's in verses 7 and 8. Jesus will keep his word. The angel said that he is not here, for he has risen. I'm trying to let somebody know that the God we serve is not the God of the dead. But he's a God of the living. And as those women showed up with their intense devotion to Jesus Christ, they did not remember the message Jesus had given them that he was going to get back up. And they had not taken the appropriate gravity about the power of God in their midst. In other words, they had not believed, as we would say in Mississippi, that fat meat is greasy. The death of Jesus crushed their hopes, their dreams, their aspirations, and their visions of the one that they have followed so intently. It is because they did not fully understand who Jesus was. That's why Judas betrayed Jesus, because he had not taken Jesus at his word. That's why Peter denied Jesus, because they had not taken Jesus at his word. That's why the women approached the tomb with dismay early Sunday morning because they had not taken Jesus at his word. And unfortunately, on this Resurrection Sunday, there's a whole lot of us who behave as if Jesus is still in the tomb because we have not taken Jesus at his word. How do I know that? Just by the way we live and conduct ourselves and walk with such finickiness and feckleness as far as our reality is concerned. Because when you know that Jesus is alive, it empowers you to do some stuff you thought you never could do. Can I preach this thing the way that I feel it? Give, give, give me eight more minutes and I'll be done. Jesus told them that he will be delivered into the hands of sinful men. The sinful men were both of political empowerment and the religious community. The Tanhedrin Council was in cahoots with the Roman government and they decided to put aside their differences to deal with Jesus. Isn't it odd how politics of the empire and how religion disconnected from a real understanding of God engage in a tag team effort to kill our Jesus. But I'm glad that Jesus says, uh, no man takes my life, but I lay down my life. He was murdered by the Roman Empire while being sanctioned by the religious leaders of that day. And they became the sinners that Jesus was talking about. Pilate was a sinner. Annas and Caiaphas were sinners. The Sanhedrin Council were sinners. The guard who whipped Jesus on Thursday night was a sinner. The crowd who cheesed Jesus and spat on him were sinners. The guard that made Jesus carry that cross up the Via Della Rosa was a sinner. The Roman crucifiers who nailed Jesus to the cross were sinners. The disciples who forsook Jesus were sinners. Even the women that showed up at the tomb were sinners. And I would dare say, don't become so smug. And don't become so sophisticated. And don't become so sadistic. Because all of us in here, before we accepted Jesus, we were sinners ourselves. Yes, we were. Yes, we were. Don't, don't become so smug and think you all that in a bag of chips. Because the Bible reminds us that all of us have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. But can I tell y'all what the antidote for this miscalculation is? 
it is remembering what Jesus said. Woo! And the only way that you can remember what Jesus said is that you got to know what Jesus said. And in order to know what Jesus said, you got to read the word that Jesus gave. And I remember Jesus telling Mary and Martha, apparently y'all don't know who I am. I am the resurrection and the life. He that believeth in me, though he were dead, yet shall he live again. When I read my Bible and the Gospels, I remember Jesus saying, uh, if you destroy this temple, in three days I'll raise it back up. But apparently they had forgotten and I believe I'm talking to some folks right now who've been going through a pandemic for the last two years and and we haven't been in community like we normally would be and I would dare say that the reason that some of us lost our minds is because we forgot what the Lord had told us the Lord said let not your heart be troubled if you believe in God believe also in me I read in his word that the Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. He makes me to lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside the still waters. He restores my soul. He leads me in the path of righteousness for his name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death. I'll fear no evil for thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Thou preparest a table before me in the presence of my enemies. Thou anointest my head with oil. My cup runs over surely. Goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. And, and I shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever. And some of y'all have forgotten that the Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the strength of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? When the wicked, even my enemies and my foes came upon me, they stumbled and they fell. Though a host should encamp against me, my heart shall not fear. Though war shall rise against me, in this will I be confident. One thing that I desire of the Lord, that I may seek after, that I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life to behold the beauty of the Lord and to inquire in his temple for in the time of trouble he shall hide me in the secret of his tabernacle shall he hide me he shall set my foot upon a rock I believe some of y'all have forgotten greater is he that's within you than he that is within the world uh, let's go ahead and have a little church uh, because I believe I got a few folks uh, while some may have forgotten uh, a whole lot of y'all remember uh, that the joy of the Lord is your strength uh, good morning St. Paul uh, may the Lord bless you real good uh, but I gotta give you one more thing uh, because is there anybody in the house uh, that's glad we serve a Jesus who is a able to keep his word but finally the resurrection repositions us to be redeemed by the blood of the lamb oh shucks may the lord bless you real good peter the one who denied jesus heard what the women had said he gets up from his position makes his way down to the tomb to see what the women were talking about now you got to remember that Peter denied Jesus. He was out of fellowship, but he went back down to the tomb to see what the women had to say. And he realized they were telling the truth, but he puts himself in position for Jesus to redeem him. And I don't know about anybody else, but that's good news from a bad spot. Because do I have any Anybody in the church right now uh, they ain't afraid to admit uh, that you've been saved uh, sanctified uh, Holy Ghost filled uh, fire baptized uh, and still messed up uh, but Jesus came uh, and redeemed you uh, by the blood uh, of the lamb uh, do I have anybody they ain't afraid to testify uh, you've been in a bad spot uh, but I got good news uh, Anybody here find yourself in a bad spot? But I got good news. The good news is the kingdom of heaven has come to earth. The good news is death has been conquered and the grave has lost forever. The good 
good news is Jesus is alive forevermore. The good news is the same power that raised Jesus from the dead. You got access to that power. Do I have anybody in the house right now ain't afraid to give God praise because God got Jesus up and when he got up he said I got all power all power all power in his hands y'all got to excuse me I don't preach myself happy but I'm glad I got good news in a bad spot going through cancer Jesus is alive going through a divorce Jesus is alive going through bankruptcy Jesus is alive having to deal with the enemies Jesus is alive is there anybody in the church right now ain't afraid to attest he is alive can you bless his name because he's alive he's alive he's alive he's alive he's alive say yes good god almighty say yes say yes now through your mask can you help me close by shouting he's alive he's alive he's alive now if you believe it give god praise if you believe it give god glory if you believe it give god the honor we got good news we got good news in a bad spot regardless of what you're facing right now we got good news and that good news is no matter how bad it seems Jesus is alive and because he is alive because he lives you and I can face tomorrow because he lives he has erased all the fears that come out and because I know he holds the future in life life becomes a little bit more bearable and a little bit more tolerable why because he lives how many y'all really believe he lives how many y'all really believe he lives listen I want to take this opportunity right now for anyone that is joining us in house or joining us online to have a relationship with the risen Savior we don't serve a dead Savior he is alive I said he is alive I said he is alive forever and ever and one day he's coming back for his people that's the blessing of being in relationship with Jesus Christ I want to lead you if you're here in church if you're watching us online I want to lead you in a prayer a prayer of new life a prayer of brand new start why because you could be alive physically and be dead spiritually the purpose of the resurrection is to submit to seal the fact that you and I can have a relationship with the God of the universe had not Jesus gotten up from the grave there would be no church there would be no need for us to gather there would be no need for us to talk about baptism and becoming a part of a local church no there would be no need for that if he's not alive but since he lives since he is alive it gives us the opportunity to engage in community and fellowship with one another and help each other to grow so I want to lead you in a prayer of new life a prayer of brand new start and if you're here right now I'm gonna give you the opportunity to make a choice for two things either one to accept Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior or two if you know who Jesus Christ is in the pardon of your sin to become a part of the local church and I want to lead you in this prayer and so if you don't mind if you who have confessed Jesus just repeat this prayer after me as a reminder of that relationship a reminder of that covenant but if this prayer connects with you I'm gonna ask you to make a decision and I know some of us are saying with well, pastor I don't like to put my business out there I, I, I'm, I'm a private person I'm an introvert that's all fine and dandy but Jesus don't need no more Nicodemuses at night
part of public confession is you just extending your hand saying, I want a relationship with God. You, and, 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 and if you extend your hand, you hold up your hand, I'm going to ask you to come down. We're not going to ask you to make a speech. Those that are joining us online, I'm going to ask you to do something as well. All heads bowed, all eyes closed. Repeat after me. God, I thank you that you raised Jesus from the dead so he can be my Lord and Savior. I believe Jesus died for my sins. I believe you raised him from the dead. I want him to be my Lord and Savior. So God, forgive me of my sins. Help me to become brand new. Send your Holy Spirit into my life. I confess Jesus right now as Lord and Savior. Thank you for the gift of salvation. In the name of Jesus, I pray this prayer. Amen. Come on, let's celebrate what God may be getting ready to do in this place. Listen, if you're watching me on Facebook or on, on our church website, if that prayer was meant for you, I want you to do me this favor. Type in salvation in the chat box. If you're watching us on Facebook or on our website, when our digital ministers will get with you to let you know what the next steps are. If you're watching us on YouTube or listening to us on the telephone and you want to be saved, you want a relationship with Jesus Christ, you want to be baptized, do me a favor. Email us at connect at spbcnc.org or call the church office at 704-334-5309. Leave your name and your number. I guarantee, even though we're off tomorrow, Marilyn, I need you to check the phone lines. I guarantee that 5 o'clock tomorrow, somebody will reach out to you to let you know what the next steps are, okay? If you're in the house, you prayed that prayer, that prayer touched your heart. You know you need a relationship with God through Jesus Christ. You don't want to leave this place without you knowing that your salvation is secure. If I'm talking to you, I just want you to do God the wonderful pleasure of just holding up your hand. If I'm talking to you, if you desire a relationship with God through Jesus Christ, would you hold up your hand right now? Hold up your hand. Hold up your hand. God is smiling at you, my brother, my sister. If you got your hand up, please come down right now. If you're in the balcony, come this way or this way. Would you go ahead and move right now? Go ahead and come on down right now. Come on down right now. God bless you. God bless you. Will there be another? Will there be another? Can we celebrate? I see one that is coming right now. I see two that are coming. Come on, 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 come on. We could do a whole lot better than that. God bless you. God bless you. If you're on the floor, we give you that opportunity as well. If you're in the house, we give you the opportunity. If you want a relationship with God through Jesus Christ, Jesus died so you can have that right. Will there be another? Will there be another? If you got your hand up, would you go ahead and move? If you got your hand up, would you go ahead and move? If you got your hand up, would you go ahead and move? We want you to come down right now. We want you to come down. This is your public confession. We ain't going to ask you to say anything, but this is your public confession. Amen. 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 God bless you. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on, come on, come on. Here's my other call, here's my other call, here's my other call. There may be someone singing in the house and on the, on the line, Pastor, I'm already saved, I know who Jesus Christ is, but you don't have a church home. You don't have, you're not connected to a church. And I know we live in a time where folks say, I don't need the church, yes you do. This is the place where we grow, develop, and become. This is what Jesus Christ gave his life for, the church universal, and we became the church local. And so we're the filling station. So if you're here right now, you don't have a church home. You've been disconnected from a church since the pandemic or during the pandemic, uh, and, and you look for a church home, I would love to be your pastor. These men and women would love to be your brothers and sisters in Christ. If you are in the house right now, do me this favor. If you don't have a church home, would you hold up your hand? If you don't have a church home, would you hold up your hand? Would you hold up your hand? If you don't have a church home, I would love to be your pastor. If I can be your pastor, would you go ahead and come now? I would love to be your pastor. You ain't got to wait till next week, next month, next year. You go ahead and come right now. Amen. Amen. I see some that are coming. Will there be another? Will there be another? Will there be another? Come on, St. Paul. Let's give God praise. Let's give God praise for those that are coming. Will there be another? I see someone else coming. Come on, St. Paul. Let's keep it going. Let's keep it going. Look at what God is doing on Resurrection Sunday. Will there be another? If you're on the bottom floor or if you're in the balcony, go ahead and come on down. Will there be another? Will there be another? Will there be another? Do I see another in the house? 
If you don't have a church home, you're not connected to a church, you don't have a church home, would you hold up your hand? Hold up your hand. We don't want nobody to be homeless as far as the Lord's kingdom is concerned. Anybody else? Come on, let's give God praise. Let's give God praise. Let's give God praise. Let's give God praise. Will there be another? 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 Check this out. If you're watching us online, on Facebook or on our church website, do me a favor. If you're watching us online, you're looking for a church home, would you type in connect? God bless you. Here come another. Here come another. God bless you. Here come another. Come on. Come on. If you're watching us online, on Facebook or on our church website, type in connect. Type in connect. One of our digital ministers are going to reach out to you. If you're watching us on YouTube or listening to us on the telephone, email us at connect at spbcnc.org. Say you want to join St. Paul. You want to be part of the tribe of St. Paul. By 5 o'clock tomorrow, one of our people will reach out to you to let you know what the next steps are. Or you can call us at the church at 704-334-5309. Before I close, will there be another? Anybody else? not connected to a church anybody else homeless as far as church is concerned churchless as far as church is concerned don't have a pastor haven't been going to church don't have a place where you can be connected i want to be your pastor these men and women want to be your brothers and sisters in christ don't let resurrection sunday pass you by without you being connected and being reminded of a savior who loves you who died for you will there be another will there be another will there be another will there be another St. Paul, can you help me to celebrate the gifts that God has sent our way? Online as well as in the house. Now, pre-COVID, I would come down to give y'all all a hug and all that stuff, but COVID is still real. So I'm gonna do fist bumps and, 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 and things of that sort. But as you all go out, we're gonna cheer for you. Um, Oh, the Charlotte Hornets lost the other night. Uh, but we're going to cheer for you as if you had just won the Super Bowl or the NBA championship. We're going to cheer for you just to celebrate you and thank God for you. So I'm going to do fist bumps if you don't mind as you all go out and our people, they're going to help you to understand what the next steps are. So God bless you. God bless you. Come on, let's give God praise. Let's give God praise. God bless you. God bless you. Hey, did God, ooh. God bless you. 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 Come on, St. Paul. Let's celebrate what God has sent our way. Let's go ahead. Let's stand. We're getting ready to get out of here. We're getting ready to get out of here. Let me just say, next week is church anniversary. Next week is church anniversary to those that are joining us online. Hey, to my Zoom congregation, as well as YouTubers and uh, Vimeo watchers and those that are listening to us online. God bless you all. Let, let me say, and I think Marilyn has gone out. Um, it blows my mind how the Lord is adding to the church because I got 34 people in CEO already. Is this mic on? Let me see, is this mic on? Is this mic on? Let, let me say that one more time. I'm, I'm taking 34 people through CEO already. We just did a class a few months ago of 28 people through CEO. So the Lord is at the church daily. There are folks who are joining church and, and, and you don't even see them because they're joining us online. But they show up, they give and all that stuff. So we're just dealing with a new way of doing church, a new way of doing church. All right. All heads bowed, all eyes closed. God, we thank you for what we have witnessed in this place. We thank you, oh God, for how you have shown yourself strong and mighty in this place. We thank you, oh God, that you, that you have blessed us in a tremendous way. Now, God, as we prepare to leave from this place, but never from your power, keep us in your sovereign care and bring us back together again. And now to him who is able to keep us from falling and to present us faultless before the presence of his glory with all exceeding joy. To the wise God be glory and majesty, dominion and power both now and forevermore. Amen. Now, I'm not going to ask y'all to stretch across the aisle, but we're going to do this doxology. So I got all these folks in here. I want to hear y'all through those masks. Amen. We're going to do this doxology. I ain't actually touch nobody hand, but as we do the doxology and as we lift up hands, we'll lift up our hands and praise for the resurrected Christ. All right. Okay, Elsa. Open up that organ.
Come on, Scott. Praise God. All blessings flow. I see y'all on the Zoom congregation. Praise. All creatures here below. Praise him above, ye heavenly hosts. Now, if you're able, just lift up your hands and praise. Praise Father, Son. That's it, that's it. And Holy Ghost. Oh, I feel you in here. I feel you in here. The three fold. here as quickly as possible so y'all can fellowship in the sunshine. Amen. Follow the directions of the ushers. All right.